Hello and welcome to this the latest edition of our virtual bridge sessions. We've now moved to um, a twice a week format, although if you're watching this online, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> You'll just follow along on our YouTube playlist. So <clears throat> without further ado, I'm delighted to welcome back to the stage, Joy McLean. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, back for back again. Back for um, more, more of the good stuff. More, so yes. more about Wakelet. So without further ado, over to you, Joy. Okay, hi everyone. Um, hope everyone's doing well. So today I'm going to go a bit deeper. Um, it was just a quick overview, but I think it's a really good um, tool um, that you can use. So I think it deserves to be gone on into a bit more. So I'll just share my screen. There we go. So here we are. Um, so this is my profile page on Wakelet. Um, and it's just got a few of my collections here. Um, these are my public collections, so anyone can see those if they want to <laughs> look me up. But I'll just go into the home page. So the reason I like Wakelet is it's a really good tool for bookmarking any content you see online. Um, so what you can do is if I go to bookmarks, you can see I've got quite a lot of bookmarks here. And um, if you find something, what you can do is, um, so you're on a web page, you can just add a link. So let me just type something in. I'll just type in, funnily enough, I'll just type in West College Scotland. And I can click on add link. And there you go, that comes up there and you've got that saved now. Another thing you can do actually, instead of doing it that way, you can um, install the Wakelet browser extension. So if you can see up here, I've got a little W. So let's see if I go to, I'll just go to my Twitter page at the moment. So if I wanted to save this, what I can do is click on the browser extension. Oops, I have to reload this. Try again, click on the browser. I suspect this may not want to do this, but I will try once more. Click on the browser extension. There we go. And it will let me save this item as a bookmark. So I can just say save to bookmarks, or I can select one of the um, collections I've got here and save it in there. But what I'll just do at the moment is I'll just save it into one of my bookmarks. And then if I reload this, there it is. You can see that's now come up in my bookmarks and I can just go straight to that page. So that's really, I find that's really, really useful. And you can also search in your bookmarks as well. So um, I've saved a lot of things from um, pages, um, recipes. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is actually look up a recipe for dinner. So I've saved these two, um, bean and halloumi stew. So I can search for that and that will take me to that. So that's, um, so I find it really useful for that. It help, stops me from forgetting where I've seen things if I can just save it. But it's not just about saving bookmarks. You can also create collections. So in here I've got a lot of collections and different things. Some of them are things that are more personal to me. Others I have um, created for um, 
in the work context. So I can show you a bit of both. So I'll show you um, this one. So for the libraries, um, when we first went into lockdown, we were trying to think of ways to easily share our resources um, and get them out um, to students and staff. So I created this collection here and it's um, basically a guide on how to access all the different digital resources that the library um, provides. However, you can also put in other resources like videos. So we'd created a video um, on how to log into Open Athens. Um, and we've, you can also put in PDFs as well. So if I say click on this, and it should open up. Should take you to where you can open up the guide to activating your Athens account. So it's a really, it can be a really good place to um, collect together lots of content and build a collection, build a guide. And you can divide it into sections. So for here, we've done it like our sort of reference images and videos. Um, and then we've got our ebook collections. As I said, you've got the links to the different resources and then newspapers and journals. So it's, um, you can obviously go back in and edit it. So, yeah, I can change anything I want. I can add something else to it. So when you click on the add button there, you can put any URL. You can also add text so you can write something. Um, you can put in videos from YouTube, um, tweets. You can put in one of the bookmarks that you've previously saved. Um, put any images, upload PDFs, and it also links to your Google Drive or your OneDrive. And then you've also got um, Flipgrid, where you can, which is another tool for recording and sharing videos, and you can record a video directly into one of your collections. But what I'll actually do is, Just show you how to um, create a collection from scratch. So it's just clicking into create a new collection. Um, you can add a cover image. You can either upload your own image or you can choose from a library. So um, we've got photos from Unsplash here. So um, you could choose from there. Um, you could search for something. I will search for, um, okay, cats. My daughter's suggesting cats here, so that's what I'm going to do. Let's go for this one that's yawning. So there you go, it goes in. Um, and you can also maybe, if you want the full cover image, but you can also make it a bit smaller or hide it if you don't want it, but, I like, the thing I like about Wakelet is that it's very visual. So you're not just left with lots of text. Um, you can make it, make it look the way you want it. You can also add a, a background image if you want. Um, so, <laughs> more cats from Sophie, <laughs> she says. Um, what cat do you want? I'll put that one in. And this should, and there you go, you've, that's not that great actually, because you can't see it that well, but you can, you can put in a background image. So, um, we shall put it, we shall make a collection about cats. <laughs> um, so you put in your title, write your description.
and from there you can go and add what you want. Um, so, as I said, say I went into YouTube, so you can search on YouTube, so I'll see if I can find any cat videos. There we go, we'll go. And if you click on that, so you can click on that and add, and that will take it directly into your collection, and you can play it from there. You can also, let's have a look. I will do a bit more. All right, okay. You can look in one of your bookmarks. Um, so if I want to, I can search. Um, we'll put in Pusheen. <laughs> one of my daughter's favourites and <laughs> I've been saving bookmarks for her as well. So there you go, you can put that in. And if I then save that, so I'll just say done. So that's a quick, that's a very quick collection just to show you. So you've got your video here that you could start playing. Yep, and, oh, and then you've got your link here and you just click on it and that would take you through. And from this, you can see that my daughter is really obsessed with cats. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just trying to find, there we go. What you can also do, um, once you've made your collections, you can, do, you can also do what's called a collaborative collection. So if you want more than one person working on it, you can invite people to work on it and you can either like send an email to them, type their name or email or anyone that you follow on Wakelet or you can send them the link or they can copy this code and um, so actually I'm going to copy the code And, and um, I'm just trying to think how to do this because I shouldn't be logged into this to show you this. So I'm just going to log out for a moment and see if I can get back in. Oh no, it's just logging me in. Is there another way I can do this? Um, what I'll do is I'll go into another browser. Just see. Right, here we go. So I'm not logged in. So if I wanted to go to that collection and just as a contributor, I could enter the code that I've just copied and join it. And then um, I would enter my, enter my name and add and this will let me contribute to this collection without having to actually have a Wakelet account. So what you could do with students is you could get a lot of students to um, contribute to a collection by using the um, collaborate, by collaborating. So, as I said, I created this collection, but I'm now in it as a contributor who doesn't own it. 
So I can go into Edit Collection and I can add a bit. However, I can also create my own collection within that collection. <laughs> So I could, I could do my own collection or I could paste a add add a URL and add something to that. So now when, when I, as the owner, go back in and I'll just um, reload that. You can see that Kitty has added to that collection now. So it's a really good way, perhaps, if you're doing a, an assignment in a class um, for students and you want them Maybe if they're doing a group assignment together and they all want to work on the one thing. That's how it could be done by inviting different collaborators and getting them to add to a collection. And what I'll do is I'll show you what we've actually been doing um, in the libraries. So we've got our group collections here. And um, we've been creating subject guides for um, different, all the different subjects um, that they teach at West College Scotland. Um, so if I go into, go into art. So this is my colleague Heather. Um, she created the collection and sent us um, the links to it so that we can then access them. And then you can see, well, this is me. I've been adding to this one. And if I go down, and then my colleague Jamie, he's also been adding to it. So we've set up all the, all the subject guides so that all of us can um, contribute something to it. And um, since lockdown happened, we just thought this was a, an effective way to bring our content together. Um, so we've been um, developing this for the um, coming year. Um, and then we can share, share our collections. So you can either copy the URL and then um, paste it into like maybe um, different places, email it to people. Um, you've got a QR code there that you know, you could scan and that would access it. Um, however, it also integrates into Teams. So if I click on Teams, hopefully this will work. So yeah, I can share it to a channel, um, create an assignment. Um, I'm going to share it to a channel first. So I will share it to trying to think what are there we go. So I will just share it into one of our um channels in our um, library team. Um, obviously you can say something about it. Um, what do I, say? I will see. I actually just say this is a test in case anyone's wondering what, why I'm sharing it. And if I share When I go into Teams, hopefully, and there we go, that has shared it into 
um, our general Teams channel. So there we go, that will, anyone can now click on that and be taken through to that. However, on Teams, if you've got your team, you can also um, put it on a tab. So for the general resources tab we had, I added that and that sort of embeds it into your Teams channel. So if you wanted to do that, first you'd have to add the Wakelet app to your Teams. So I've, I've already done this, um, but you would search for it. Search for it and click. And I say I've already done it, so it's showing open, but you would go to there to add it. Um, and then when you wanted to, if you wanted to add it on a tab, you could click on your new tab. Um, you would find Wakelet. And then you would have to, and I probably should go back for this, but you would um, get the URL of um, that specific collection. You would put it in there and then you would save it. And that would bring it up in a tab like this. And so I think that's really good because it, again, it, it's very visual, um, brings all the um, links and everything up and it means that your students or other staff could just view any collection you put into Teams right there and then. Um, and you can also um, embed it. So you've got um, different choices there um, about how you would want it to look. So you can have it like that or you can have it so that um where have I gone to sorry you can have it so that it's um, going horizontally along and um, you can change diff different things um whether you want it in a light or a dark mode <laughs> and then you would just copy the embed code and you can put it into um, your VLE. So we've put it into Moodle. Um, that's what we're working on at the moment. You can also export it as a PDF if you want. Um, it's gonna take a wee bit of time. Um, but that's maybe quite useful, yep, if you've maybe got, if you maybe do need to have a paper copy or you've got students that that would be beneficial for. So if I open that up, and there you can see that's it. So that, I mean, that may be more useful, obviously. Well, no, the links do work actually. So you can, except not today. <laughs> the links should work. They are not working today, but But that could be useful maybe if, um, depending on the collection you have, maybe if it's more guidelines for something, um, something more narrative, so you can do that. Um, and the other thing I will just show you quickly is um, the accessibility that comes with it. So you've got uh, the immersive reader built in. So if I click on this, so this brings up um, the text you've put in, and then you can have it read. And you can obviously change the voice settings, change the voice speed. You can also You've got, you can alter the text size, the font, um, themes, so, you know, depending maybe if someone has um, dyslexia, they could change that to make it more, more accessible for themselves. Um, 
it's got a picture dictionary as well, which I haven't quite used, but you can also change the language, which I think, again, would be very useful, particularly if you have students um, who are studying ESOL. So there we go. So there I've changed it into Czech. Um, and you can Again, change it. Yep. So there's a lot of different languages there that can be used. So I think in terms of accessibility, that's that's really, really good. And then also you can, if you have a profile, you can share your profile. You can also follow other Wakelet users. So here, I'm following um, a lot of different people. What I'll say about the collections is, so although I've got a lot of collections, I've got different levels of visibility on them. So um, some of them I have made public. Um, so I've got this beat the boredom one. Um, if I go into edit. So public so that everyone can see it, um, but you can also make it unlisted so that, as it says, only someone with the link can see it. Um, or if you've got anything that you just want to keep totally private, you can change it to that. So you've obviously got um, quite a lot of control, you know, um, it's up to you how, how you want to keep it. And the other thing you can do is, and this is up to you again, if you want people to be able to copy your collection, you can do that as well. Um, so with this copy bit, that means that other people can copy in this collection that I've made and then they can alter it to suit themselves. But I think as far as I can remember, it will still show that you were the one that originally created it. So even if someone does copy it, it still shows you as the original author. Um, if you're wanting to see like other people's collections, you can look at, you've got Surf, well, Surf School, that'll give you examples of different ways of using Wakelet. Um, but Showcase, again, just shows you different different collections that people have made and it's quite good for getting um, ideas of how, how you can use it. But you can also um, just, if I go back here, <laughs> You can also just search if there's anything you want to search on. So I quite like looking for recipes. So you could do that and find lots of recipes, obviously in, in the public collections. Um, and then if you say clicked on that, you could save that collection to one of your collections. So it's quite a good way of finding content as well. So I think that is everything I want to talk about at the moment. So are there any questions? Uh, Joy, I was wondering, you talked about using Flipgrid to record your own videos. Oh, yes. Do you give us a little more detail on that, whether there's any limitations to it, how it works. Well, I mean, you do have to also um, set up a Flipgrid account. Yeah. Um, so it would be, I, to be honest, I, I'm still um, playing about with that myself. So that's one bit that I'm not entirely um, comfortable with. But um, I think you can record videos of about 10 minutes. 
So it might not be best if you're wanting to do something quite involved, but if it's maybe just something you're wanting to, maybe a quick demonstration of something. We have time for one more question from Jill, who'd posted into chat. If you'd like to unmute yourself, Jill, and, and ask your question. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I was just wondering in terms of the um, levels of privacy and things like that, if you're doing a library one, would mm -hmm. you make it, was it called unlisted? Yes, yeah, so. You would you use then for that? It is, I think if we were just wanting it to, yeah, be within mm -hmm. our institution, it would make it unlisted. Yeah. However, I mean, with ours, um, we've got the Open Athens authentication anyway, mm -hmm. so if someone outside did click on it, they wouldn't be able to access mm -hmm. the resources mm -hmm. without our authentication. So mm -hmm. I guess if you did make it public, maybe just for potential students to see, Mm -hmm. They would get an idea of what you had, okay. but yeah. they couldn't actually go directly into it without being registered. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay and just for the recorded part of the session, um, unfortunately, that's where we come to an end. So if you, if you were still in the room, you could continue the conversation with us. Uh, but um, I'd just like to say thank you to, to Joy and Sophie. Hi, Sophie. <laughs> for contributing for today's <laughs> session. <laughs> and hopefully you'll be able to join us for a future Virtual Bridge session, which is now running Tuesdays and Fridays. So um, less, but more in some ways. Okay then. So until then, thanks for joining us. Thank you.